Hey, what's going on, champs? I'm Aaron Deliosa. Welcome to an Immigrant's Life podcast, my podcast about immigrants, immigration, and everything in between. Today, we have a guest, a special guest, my first friend in Canada, very beautiful friend, McKellar Faye Davis. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You introduce yourself. My name is McKellar Davis. Mm-hmm. I'm a single mother of two beautiful <laughs> kids, one boy, one girl, and I'm from the small, lovely island called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And family, mom, dad, how many siblings? Many. <laughs> Can't keep count. Many. Many and from the mom and dad or just the da- dad? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. That's okay. And where are they at right now? St. Vincent. Most of them is here. Well, oh, most of them are here? Yes. Yes, majority of them are here. Oh, okay. And how would you describe St. Vincent for the people that doesn't know? Beautiful, tropical, very nice getaway. Yeah. How big is the island? Oh, my goodness. Um, can't remember. <laughs> I left there a very long time. Okay, that's good. And how was your childhood there? Like, it, was it good? Very good, very good. Um, I would say I uh, I left when I was well. I came to Canada when I was about thirteen years old. So oh. most of my childhood was spent here in Canada. Okay, whose idea was it to move? Uh. Both parents, I guess, I suppose. Yeah, I would say both parents. You came by yourself or with someone else? I came with someone, yes. With mom and dad? I, my mom came with my mom. And your siblings? Or was it, it was just you and her? I, well, every, well uh, how would I put it? Uh, some came first. Then the others came after. Okay. Did you want it to move or you were you forced to move? I was excited to move. It was a better opportunity, better yes. education. Of so, course. Yes. Very excited. So it was so it was mom and dad's idea and then they dragged you along. And then where did you guys stay? We stayed uh, and the West Island. Mm-hmm. With family? With family, yes. Okay. Family, yes. You did, so you, you didn't have your own place first? Well, first, no. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. It's such a long time. It's good exercise of memory. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because me, I, we moved. In an, we had an apartment the day we came here. My mom was set up everything. Mm. I don't know about you guys. Well, we were set up because when I came, we lived in a house. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the West Island. That's how I, we met, obviously. Yes. Mm. And tell me your first day. Was you, were you mind blown? Oh my like, goodness. Like uh, what's going on? It was a pretty, pretty big change. Yeah. Big change. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it, loved it. Still can't get used to winter, but. No, I don't, I don't think we'll ever. <laughs> like, we're not designed for that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because sometimes, um, you know, when it's winter and it's like thick, thick snow. Mm. By the way, for the people that doesn't know, we live in Quebec, which winter is crazy. Mm. Like we get bad, bad snow. So sometimes I'm clearing off the snow off of my car and people will say, oh, like, why did you move here? You know, and I always say, because I don't want to starve to death. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> which is so true. I always say to my, like, it, I always, it's like a mantra to myself. It's either this, which is no, or starvation. <laughs> and guess what? Which one I choose all the time? <laughs> Not starvation. 
But the snow. <laughs> the snow. Ah, the snow. Which season did you come here? Like I came in the summer. Ah, uh, lucky ducky. Uh, was it J- July? July? No, June 30th, 95. June 95. 95. I was still yeah. in elementary. But 95, June. I came October. Mm. So, and from a tropical country, straight, straight to blizzard. So you had time to really uh, adjust yourself because June and then the fall and then the dreaded winter. Exactly. But yes. The, so were you excited to see snow? Oh my goodness, yes, I was. Yeah, Very. <laughs> It was magical. And I, I stayed outside for like the first good year. You did? Yeah. Oh, man, I hated it. But then again, did you taste it? Did you stick your tongue out? <laughs> like everybody does this. I think everybody. everyone did that. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. You have to. You know, <laughs> I, I experienced it. I was walking. I came from a store or something. Mm. And it just started falling. And I said, what is this magical thing falling, right? So I stick my tongue out, tasted it. I said, ah, tastes like water, <laughs> which is says water, right? Yeah. So I got home. I got home, uh, which I was staying with my mom then, obviously with my family. And then my mom called and said, oi, check it out. It's snowing. I said, yeah, it is. And she said, shovel the snow. <laughs> And I said, what do you mean shovel the snow? This is the first time, obviously, you know. What do you mean shovel the snow? You have to shovel it or else we won't be able to park. So I said, I guess we have to shovel the snow. So that's the day I fell in love with the snow and hated the snow at the same day. (laughs) How about you? Were you indoors? Obviously, I'm sure you're indoors. Indoors, but um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's been a while. It's been a while. I like went, upsta- went outside, took like a huge ball, because it just reminded me of snow cone. It's like a snack <laughs> we have back home. <laughs> yeah, we have ice. To... <laughs> you put it yeah. in a cup and you pour the juice on with the with the um the milk. You use mi- oh yeah, condensed milk. Exactly. Oh, what we use condensed milk, or sometimes we use a uh, coloring the color Same. coloring water. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So good. Yeah, that's how I thought of snow. And and then when did you start hating it? When I have to take the, the bus to school every morning, I have to stand <laughs> up outside in the cold for so long. And the so, bus is never on time. Uh, <laughs> never. And that's what I was going to ask you, too. Did you go to school? Obviously, you answered that. Yes. Did you start high school or did you have to go? Like, how did it go? I had to start high school all over. Oh, again boy. Because the credentials mm-hmm. of the Vincent did not count here. Yeah. This is one of the things that people doesn't know that, you know, that locals here, that we have to restart. Exactly. Not just our lives. We have to restart pretty much everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Which did you go to an English school or a French school? No, I had to go to a French school because I, as well, I don't know if uh, it's uh, based on an immigration thing, but you had to go into uh, class Dakai, which is a welcoming class. So mm-hmm. I started basically from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> And it was so obviously it was French. And did anyone in your family spoke French that could no. help you? Oh uh, boy! No. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another thing that some people exactly. cannot think is like you start. No one knows how to speak French. They force you to speak French, which is, in a way, it's good, obviously. But when the kid has a homework, who helps Faye to do homework? Mm-hmm. And there was no Google back then. Exactly. No Google. Uh, well, I think there was like internet, but it was dial up. But you, you took, you, it takes 100 years to just see a picture. <laughs> okay. So it's useless. But as, might as well open a book. Mm-hmm. So you just would use a book. Encyclopedia. 
<laughs> that was our Google. <laughs> You're balling. You are balling with encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. I always, re- I always like, like back back home when I like saw my cousin with encyclopedias, and I'll be like, "This rich motherfuckers." <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. I, I don't know in uh, Saint Vincent, but we never opened the encyclopedia. It's for looks. Mm. We never opened. There we had, I know I remember I had an atlas. Mm. Out of, Encyclopedia is when I came here. Okay. I was, that's what I, when I knew about Encyclopedia here. Obviously you found it challenging to learn a new language. It was. Yes, it and, was. But were you excited as well learning it? Mm. Excited, I won't say excited, but it was just something different, something new. Mm. And it's like, it's kind of a must if you want to survive here in Quebec. You have mm-hmm. to um, it's a fact. put it in your brain that, you know, you got to try and get it done pack. Mm. And you learn it quickly or? It took some time. It took some time because I did not graduate it when I was supposed to. So I okay. had to end up leaving an actual high school and finish my credentials in adult ed. Oh, okay. How about making friends? Was it easy to make friends or a struggle because of language? Uh, it wasn't hard because I, I pretty much fit in. I yeah, fit people in likes you. Well. You're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, like, I went to uh, Lavoie, which is in Côte d'Inege, and mm-hmm. it- Majority, it's, well, I won't say majority, but it was like, it's like a, a black community. So there oh, okay. was a lot of like black kids going there at that mm-hmm. time. So it wasn't uh, hard to make French friends at all. And majority of the, majority of the, my classmates were Islanders, like some was mm-hmm. from Jamaica, some was from Grenada, some was from St. Lucia. You know, some was from uh, Pakistan. Okay. A really, really, really awesome friend by the name of, um, oh my gosh, what was her name again? Ah, can't remember. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a while. Was she from uh, she the was islands too? from Sri Lanka. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, it, it's impossible to remember. <laughs> It's impo- I used Go- to call her Takani, Takani. because it's yeah. the shortest thing I could remember <laughs> to her name. <laughs> I Which- used to call her Takani. Her name was pretty longer than that, but I shortened it. Sri Lankan names are impossible to, to like. They have all the alphabets. It's like they're running out of alphabets. They'll take everything. Oh, my goodness. It's very difficult to pronounce, obviously, you know. It was... Takani and you, you guys are like Batman and Robin. Exactly. And then I had another one by the name of Carrie Ann. She was mm-hmm. from Jamaican, Jamaica. Mm-hmm. We were like really, really cool, really cool buddies. And uh, after we left high school, we just like... It happens. On track of each other. Mm-hmm. I always wonder if she went back to Jamaica or if she's still here. But And I never ran into her since, so... Never, huh? Never, ever. You know what? I was thinking about that the other day. That uh, remember when we used to work this just thousands of years ago, and we met so much people there. Exactly. The amount of people we met there that like scattered around Montreal, and I'll never see them again. Yeah. Or will I have never like I've I seen a couple of them at birthday parties. Yes, okay. I have, even like last summer, I've seen a mm-hmm. few of them at birthday parties, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have. I I know you, obviously you, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> You're my girl. Uh, and then a few of them. Other than that, that's it. I don't really, I don't really stay contact with uh, them. Okay, understood. Yeah. Well, um, what shocked you the most in Canada? Um... The manners. Oh, tell me, tell <laughs> me, <manners>. tell me. <laughs> Back home, even if I walked on the street, even mm. if I met a hundred people, I would have to tell that a hundred people good morning. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Here, you go down the street and no one says nothing to you. I'm no. like, sometimes you say good morning, hi, good afternoon. No one answers you. No one responds. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. I know back home by the time I get home. <laughs> All the good mornings are used up. I'm getting licks for not saying hi to someone I don't even know. Because <laughs> that message gets home quick. So the man oh, is yeah. what else? Like just attitude of the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, different. Like different. But uh comparing Mm-hmm. Here in Canada to New York, oh my goodness, <laughs> we're very respectful here. We're Canadians, you know. We're very. We're respectful. Canadian, and that's one thing. Yes. Yeah, very and that's one polite. thing about a lot of Americans think like, oh, Canadians, they're polite. Yeah, we are majority of us, but they're still assholes. Hmm. What did you like when you moved here? Like. Mm. The activities, like every summer, mm. there's something going yeah. on. And uh, summertime, outside gets dark at like, what, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 10, mm-hmm. 30, 11. Back home, outside is dark by like 6, 30, 7. You're right. Same <laughs> in the Philippines. Same thing. Yeah, so it's like, that was like, you look at the time, it's like 9 o'clock. Like, it's still bright outside. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> But then you have to pay <laughs> when winter comes because 4 exactly. p.m. is like nighttime. Exactly. Yeah. Well, winter comes, then the time goes to the same. Exactly. So you said you had a lot of black friends in school and outside school? Out of school, it's just school, home, home mm-hmm. church. Activities, huh? Well, I uh, I was uh, I learned to play the piano. You know, you know how to play the piano? Yes, I do. I never know this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have never talked about this ever. I know how to play the piano. I've been in a couple of competitions. I have my medals. Well, what is going on right now? <laughs> I have gold medals and trophies. Yes. When did this happen and how come I don't know about this? We have been friends easily 15 years. Hey, there's a lot of people don't know that. Even my boss at work, how she figure out mm. there was a resident that had a piano in her room. And uh, one okay. day I just went to see if I still got it. And? And my boss ran from her office, came around and she's like, oh my gosh, I they didn't know you. I go, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> wow, I I never knew. I mean, I used to come over to your place before when you know when we were way younger. I never see medals. I never see anything. I see Tupac Shakur's poster. <laughs> That's what I see. That's my my boy right there. <laughs> they were in the basement in a corner and a huge gold stand. You know what? I probably didn't pay attention. Yeah, maybe you didn't. I was just busy eating uh, jerk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned work. Uh, where do you work? Tell people where you do you work. I'm a nurse at Sunrise. She's a nurse in a nursing home, right? Yes, it is. Private uh, nursing home. She's one of those uh, frontliners. <laughs> yes, I am. The MVPs. And how are you dealing with uh, work and obviously COVID? How are you guys doing it? We're doing good. We can I can say we've been since COVID started. We've been one of many that did not have any cases. Wow, that's amazing! All fingers crossed. Yes, that's amazing. And how many residents are there? Give or take. Where I work, it's about 120, 130. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. But there's other sunrise that our capacity is more. Well, oh, there are. It's this is like a this one a, smaller one. Yes. Oh, okay. And you work with Filipinos, obviously. <laughs> feeding you all the food the bad Take food over <laughs> oh they are 
And I gotta say, I love my pantsuit. <laughs> Everybody loves pantsuit. Everybody. <laughs> yes, but only the few I eat from, and they know who they are. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very like you really have to know what to do and how to do exactly. it. Exactly. Hey. Or else, if the the if the pasta is a bit mushy, ugh, I hate it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've that's never, why, from from the few that I've ate from, it's always been good. Always what, been amazing. What if the person that you don't like getting pancit from gives you some? What you throw it in the trash? No, I I usually ask who make it. And if I <laughs> out, I ask. And if the girls be like so and so, then I'll be like, no, I'll pass. Thanks. That's so funny. Obviously, it's been a topic of the the zeitgeist about r- racial profiling. Have you ever been a victim of it? Yes, and, I have. And when? And when? I was fifteen, fourteen or fifteen years old. Mm-hmm. Coming from school on the 215 bus from Cope Virtue. Mm-hmm. And back then, I used to dress like a tomboy. Baggy pants, mm-hmm. baggy top, huge headphones on my head. Came mm-hmm. in, sat on the bus. With, with the Walkman, with the Walkman, <laughs> Sony Walkman. With my yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow Walkman. <laughs> 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 that you have like to okay. care. Was it the the tape or the discs? The tape. You have to have like tapes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. And so what happened? Sat in the single seater, mm-hmm. minding my mm-hmm. business. Then the police pulled up, stopped the bus, and then they came to me and they're like, "Were you? Um, we just had a robbery at a tipper. <laughs> it was like a kush tar. Okay. And." I was the one that fit the profile. Like 10,000 people that looks like you? I looked at him and was like, I don't know what you're speaking about. Since I got on the bus, I ne- I did not come off of it. So they stopped the bus. Yeah, like they, they wave it. Yeah, they literally stopped the bus. How did, they, how did they even see you from, from the bus? To. I don't know. And then thank God for the good people who had a good heart. Mm. Some people stood up for me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, she never left the bus. And she came on. She's been sitting here all along. That's, that's... They emptied the bus. And uh, me and the bus driver, we, we got in a little back and forth argument. What do you mean? And, uh, they asked for everyone's ID and everything like that. Because mm-hmm. it was myself and my sister. It was the two of us coming from school. Okay. So, yeah, that happened to us. Wow. Yeah. That was my first encounter with uh, racial profiling. Was there any other... Uh, I know you get stopped a lot uh, traffic with traffic stop. Well, uh, yeah, but all my stuff are always legit, so they have <laughs> no excuse. And I always question them, mm-hmm. why did you stop me? Because mm-hmm. uh, if you stop me, I want my uh, driver's license and registration you have to give me an answer to why you stopped me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, as a mom, obviously you have kids and obviously you're worried about them growing up and and being racially profiled, right? And yeah. what, are you, what are you doing to prepare them for that? Have you been... Well, uh, I'm not sure if my son is at the point of understanding that as yet. Of course, he's young, yeah. But uh, my daughter spoke to her about it, and uh, she she pretty much understands and uh, know. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I have anything to worry about with her. Yeah? Yeah. Um, she's pretty, and uh, she's pretty. everybody likes her. Yeah, she she's uh, someone, well, both of them, they're someone that's pretty... Uh, Easy going and friendly, easy to make friends and yeah. And uh, I know her friends, so if mm-hmm. I don't know them, then she's not gonna be going anywhere or you know with yeah. just any and anyone. If I cannot speak to that friend's parent, then she's not mm-hmm. gonna go with that person. Oh, like play, like going, uh, like if they sleeping have over. To, like, Do you let them uh, sleep the over? Park, or if they have, she uh, has to go over to their home or something like that. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I need to know who the parent is first. I'm not just a sender to someone's house and I don't know the the mother yeah. or the father. Yeah. Because yeah. God forbid, mm-hmm. I always tell everyone, mm-hmm. I would put on an orange jumpsuit for those two kids. Of course. <laughs> I'll just, you know what? There's no point anymore. Let's just exactly. let's get it done. <laughs> yeah. Do you let them sleep over? Sleep over? No. They can no, go and visit, but they got to be back in my house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. Only family members. Sleepover family members. And okay. very close friends. And mm. close friends that like really close friends. Yeah, like you know them since like... Exactly. exactly. When you were 13, 14. Yeah, that's... that's oh, man. Do you, oh, talking about work, do you find it's harder to find work for immigrants? Um, I wouldn't say harder. Just... Just like, no, I wouldn't say it would be harder. I think it's the, the way you present yourself, mm. uh, the way how you maybe respond or answer their questions, and the way how you write your CV yeah. or resume. That's that's so important. A lot of people goes up to me and say, hey, can you help me with uh, my CV? And I say, okay, write your CV and then let me review it. The way they write it is like, what is going on here? I don't understand what's mm-hmm. happening. They say random things. Like, I play volleyball. Exactly. I don't care exactly. if you play volleyball. Exactly. To be honest, it should be thought in school. In high school, it should be thought. Many things should be thought in high school. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Like, it's one thing I hate. I hate, hate it with a passion. Don't like writing mm. it. Don't like redoing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's something that has to be done. Yeah, yeah. You have to update it every time you move exactly. to a different work. You have to update exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, it it's a lot of a lot of things that should be thought in school, and we're not being it's not being mm-hmm. thought, mm-hmm. and whatever random stuff. Same as finance. I think mm-hmm. finance should be taught in school too. Yeah, I try to teach my kids about finance, just basic mm-hmm. ones. <laughs> I think the both of mine gets it because even if I have my change laying around, they're gone. <laughs> it's gone. Well, I think they don't know what it means. <laughs> Since they just... No, they know, no, because they know we have a goal mm-hmm. and they want to help me get to that goal. So, yeah, they know. That's awesome. Let's talk about your daughter's school situation because I know mm-hmm. you're having problems with that. Tell us about that. Well, my daughter, she is 12 Mm -hmm. in grade six, should have been in high school, but because she is uh, struggling with the French, Mm -hmm. I am having a hard time switching her from Mm -hmm. the French system to the English system because, well, they say I have no credentials in English because I started out in French. Okay. Which I find is strange because everything that I graduated with is mm-hmm. in from the English system. Okay. So I had to go through a whole process of like getting all of my old documents, mm-hmm. which I had to go to the school board. I had oh, to wow. put my own documents. <laughs> I had to get it authorized. I had to get it signed. Oh. Man, a lot of work. Then I took it to the school board, and each and every time I go back to the school board, they said, I need this, oh, I need that. They're I playing need. the game. So I was like, okay, give me a list of everything I need, and I'll get it, and when I have everything, I would come to you. And each time I go, something is missing. Ugh. I was like, okay. I let it rest. She called me like twice already, mm. and I'd be like, you know what? I'll get back to you when I'm ready. That's nuts. Got all the documents from her school and everything. And uh, still, it, it's still a problem. It's still a work in process. Yeah. The last thing I was told when I went, mm-hmm. oh, you got to get your birth paper. Mm-hmm. I was like... You, yourself, birth paper. Yes. Why? Yes. So I was like, this is not for me, it's for my daughter. They're like, yes, we need proof of... of um... So I was like, some people, they say you, once a sibling went to a school, mm. you can use them. Of course. But she wasn't letting me have that. She And 
it so happened that when I mentioned her name to someone else, okay. the person's taking care of my daughter's file, mm-hmm. apparently she tend to give immigrants a very hard time. Oh, here we go. Hands for uh, oh, yeah. So it's it's still a fight, but I'm not gonna give up. Yeah, for uh, for the people that doesn't know here in Quebec, if you're an immigrant, you cannot go to an English school. You have to go to a French school. Okay. My yes. my kids goes to English school because my wife went to English school here, so my kids can go. But mm-hmm. a lot of obviously some people moves here and they are forced to go to French school because they want the French the Quebec government for them to learn French which is a good thing but personally I don't like it it's, it takes away the rights exactly should have a choice seeing that it's uh they say it's a land of the free it's mm-hmm. a free country mm-hmm. you must speak freedom of blah 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 but mm-hmm. you're still being controlled by their system the educational yeah. system yeah, it's. I think it's the fear of the language vanishing, which I don't understand because everybody wants to learn it. Mm-hmm, exactly. And if you live here, you will learn it. Yeah, you will. Even if you go to an English school, there is French classes. Yeah. I find what I notice personally, people or kids who went to an English school Mm-hmm. tend to have a higher or better grade than someone that went to a full-blown French school. Yeah, because when they go to school, they speak French. When they get home, they speak English. Exactly. Basically. So they don't really, they don't have the drive. Exactly. And then they want some of them, oh, um, you know, you can get a tutor. I'm like, yeah, but a tutor... I have to pay a tutor more money that I'm making. Mm-hmm. You know? That's right. And being a single mom. Exactly. It's not almost easy. impossible. And a lot of people think, oh, you're getting money from the government. Yes, oh. I'm getting money from the government, but it's still not enough. When you're nope. even paycheck to paycheck, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it can block a hole. Yes, it can help you do something, but... Yeah. A lot of people mentality they think that you're getting money from the government that oh that should do. Uh yeah, it no. It doesn't reach far. It's a case of bad apples. They see bad apples and they think, "Oh, everybody's bad." Mm-hmm. Everybody takes a ba- advantage exactly. of that of the system. Exactly. They not knowing there are some women like you that are really struggling to, mm-hmm. you know, give kids better life. It's not just about feeding them and bringing them to school, it's about giving them a good life. Mm-hmm. If they want to go do sports, if, if they want to yep. play piano or whatever. Yep, that's true. And peop- a lot of people just don't understand that, you know. They think that you're taking advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Unfortunately. Going back to quickly to St. Vincent, mm-hmm. what do you miss most about St. Vincent? Everything. <laughs> Food. <laughs> Fresh fruits. <laughs> ah, the fruits. Going it to the beach. It tastes different. Uh, it tastes so different, the fruits there. It definitely do. Yes. I mean, you know, obviously, I we love living here in Quebec. Quebec's amazing. It's a great place to live. Mm-hmm. But there are obviously things that we don't have here that yep. the country we came from. Yeah. Like mango. Mm-hmm. You literally mango. can walk to the tree <laughs> <laughs> and pick your mangoes. <laughs> yeah, be careful though, because if that tree and get fresh fish. <laughs> yes, yes. And we went back to visit Philippines with my family last year, and we went to the market, which is <laughs> it was a shock to my family, obviously, because it was their first time seeing dead pigs dead fish mm-hmm. and they're just like smashing the fish <laughs> kill like they're not killing it they're just st- stunning it and then my i'm thinking i said why are you torturing the fish <laughs> <laughs> just kill the goddamn thing right and then i realized oh because their mentality 
there is if it's dead, it's not fresh. Mm. Imagine pita in our country. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> we have to eat, man. <laughs> we have to eat. Mm. Going back to fruits, what's the most famous fruit in uh, uh, St. Vincent? My goodness, there are so many. Oh my goodness. My favorites mm. mangoes. Yes. Of rose. Mm. I don't know what, if you know about plum rose, but plum I rose probably is know plum. What does it look like? Maybe it's called, maybe it's a different name in your country. Who knows? Mm -hmm. It's, there is white, there is red, there is pink. Let me Google it quickly. Plum rose. Yes. Plum rose. Oh, I know this. Yeah, we have this. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is delicious. We call it Makopa. There that's what it's called. Oh, that's good too. Nate. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Oh, fruits. Oh, I love fruits. So good. Mm -hmm. One question. If you make good money, like you are set, would you live back to St. Vincent or stay here? Always stay. Stay in Quebec? <laughs> Say what now? <laughs> no, I'm asking you. Would you stay in Quebec? If I live to see retirement, mm. my bones are not staying in this cold country. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still young. It's not like... Back and forth. Yeah. Definitely. That's perfect. Definitely. That's the one I want to. I think that's what everybody wants. Oh my goodness. As much as you love St. Vincent, as much as I love Philippines, I cannot stay there. I think I could. Once I have the beach, no. I think I could. How's the weather in St. Vincent? Beautiful. Do you have like typhoons? No. Nothing. It's like perfect no. all the time. It's like California. There is a, like right now, I think it's um, hurricane season. That's what I mean. But because we're so mountainous, mm. there's lots of mountains around, it's just passes over it doesn't really there might be a few damage it breaks it down but it does not really um affect why are you in quebec i keep hearing that question all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's 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 the question that people says to me ask me all the time say why do you move to quebec you don't I speak know. french <laughs> I have an answer to that. What do you answer? Better to that? education. <laughs> that's, all, that's the first thing that comes out my mouth. <laughs> no, I mean, the question would be like, why did you choose this place? Forget about the education and everything. Oh, okay. Because hmm. majority of my family is here. Okay, family. Like a big chunk of my family is here. We are like Canada, New York, England. There's St. Vincent, there's Trinidad. Hmm. But the trunk majority is here in Canada. Oh, so it's family. For me, the answer will be, I don't have a choice. <laughs> 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 I tell people all the time, imagine you in a room full of doors, okay? And the room that you're in, it's burning. <laughs> and you have to wait for one of the doors to open. And you don't know what's behind it. It could be a lion. It could be, I don't know, uh, spikes. You will take the first door that opens. <laughs> and that's Quebec. Thankfully, it's a beautiful place. Yes, I love it Quebec. Is. I love Quebec. Oh, minus the, you know, the, the language and the politics. It's a beautiful place. It's a yeah, great place to live. It is a lovely place, especially in the summertime. Uh, Montreal, nothing. Nothing beats Montreal in the summer. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that you mentioned summer in Montreal because I remember this when we went to the Caribbean Fest. Do you remember this? Mm, not really. Okay. Well, you, we, there's so many. Yeah, but there's no, so many there's them. so many. We didn't go all the time. It was just like one time we went in the Caribbean Fest, and it was the first time to realize there are different countries from the Caribbean. I thought it was just like Jamaica mm -hmm. and then St. Vincent. That's because I know St. Vincent because of you. 
Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I was like, I the way the 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 dresses and the way they dance, I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. I mean, the women, I forget about the women. Women, sorry. First round picks, gorgeous women. Uh, oh yeah. I remember that's the first time I was single. Then you were with someone, but I remember we we're always together. We're going out together, and I remember how black guy stares at me when I'm with you. <laughs> Yes. I just paid attention to that. And yeah, because you're used to it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like six to three hundred over here. Oh know? my gosh! I, I, this one vivid memory of mine. We're on a bus and we're sitting together, right? We're going somewhere. I think we're going shopping. And there's this four black guys got on the bus and they were staring us down. Like, oh my God. like I owe them money I or something. I do not remember that yes. at all. <laughs> I unfortunately have a good memory. And then, okay. and then you saw them, and then you went up to me and said, look at those bastards looking at you. <laughs> and you start hugging me. Like, we're boyfriend no. and girl. Yes. And I said, will you stop? I'm going to get beat up by these big guys. I'm like, very small guy over here. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to kill you. Oh and you goodness. were just laughing. You were just, you always do that to me. You torture me all the time. <laughs> it oh, was like, wow. I was like, I was so scared. And then, <laughs> then that night too, we went home and we're waiting for the bus. And this car just pulled. I don't know why we're standing kind of like a bit far from each other. Maybe like two feet, three feet. And this guy just pulled in put down the windows, look up to you and said, it was a black guy. Do you want to ride? And I think it was in French, actually, because I didn't understand what he said because you said something to him and then he left. And then I said, what was that? And he says, he wants to give me a ride. I'm like, what is going on? Oh, my goodness. You have a very good memory. <laughs> I do. Unfortunately. <laughs> delete, delete all those things. It's like I, I don't know why it sticks with me. <laughs> It's just like random stupid things. It sticks with me. The the thing is, if I ask people that's in that, like, let's say we're three people there, right? I'll remember it. You don't remember. I ask the other person. Just, I don't remember that. So now I don't know if I remember it or I just made it up. Imagine it. <laughs> but this one, I'm sure it happened. These two things that I just okay. told. Okay. Well, I'll believe you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm not making that up. Goodness, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a long time, man. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. How we many work... years? Yeah. Oh we used to work at the airport. I remember yes. uh, I hated when you're like in this mood coming to work and you're like grumpy. And <laughs> I don't know why, but you'll stand beside me anyway. <laughs> but uh, we used to work for a fast food chain. Mm-hmm. So I'll be working at a, my station. And she'll stand, Faye will stand beside me and just give me attitude the whole time. <laughs> and I'll be like, what's your problem? Oh, my God. Nothing. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything. You walk in <laughs> giving me shit. Nothing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I guess I'm a masochist. I, I like, you know, torture. I don't know. But I just stand <laughs> to there. To this and day, I, I think I still torture you. <laughs> all the time. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, I love you. Love you. I love, love you. Love love you. <laughs> I think that's a good time to wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Thank you again for coming on. I'm so glad that you did this. You're welcome. You are welcome. Thank you very much. If you want to know more about the podcast or if you want to start or join a conversation about our topics, please head to my Facebook page, An Immigrant's Life Podcast. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can contact me through the Facebook page or send an email to immigrantslife at yahoo.com. If you'd like to support the show, please like, share, review, and subscribe.